Right. Matt Gates was nominated for this position because we have a problem at the Department of Justice. For the last eight years, they have run roughshod over rule of law in this country. They have prosecuted political opponents. They ran the Russia collusion hoax. And too many people in Washington, D.C. did not stand up against what was happening there. Republican Trey Gowdy was on Fox News sharing his opinion that Matt Gates would never get approved as attorney general, but things didn't go as planned. He got absolutely called out, and it's a moment you've got to see. Let's check it out together. And many Americans are upset about it. Matt Gates is one of the most effective people at fighting that Russia collusion hoax and other information operations, whether it was the Brett Kavanaugh information operation, the Donald Trump Russia collusion hoax information operation, or the one that is referenced here, which is something that the FBI and Department of Justice, which hate Matt Gates, looked into and cleared him of any wrongdoing. The idea that we're that this is about the, the issue is corruption. It's the Department of Justice's corruption. And people are sick and tired of people in Washington, D.C. doing nothing as these people try to destroy the country and getting upset at someone who actually might root out the, the corruption there. We don't have a Department of Justice. We have a Department of Injustice. And that's why you get Matt Gates as a nominee. Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz is facing backlash after making controversial and slanderous remarks about Tulsi Gabbard. Gabbard is someone who has met with war criminals, violated the Department of State's guidance, and secretly, clandestinely went to Syria and met with Assad, who gassed and attacked his own people with chemical weapons. She's considered to be essentially by most, uh, by most assessments, a, a Russian asset and would be the most Is that how you dangerous... consider her? Is that what you oh, consider yes. her? Oh, yes. Uh, there's no question. Let's dive into this clip of Caroline Levitt, Trump's new press secretary. This is one you definitely don't want to miss. You want to talk about violence against political opponents? Let's talk about the fact that Democrats have been labeling President Trump a threat to democracy for the better half of 10 years. Let's talk about how they have compared him to Hitler, one of the worst mass murderers in the history of the world, and that Kamala Harris and Joe Biden weaponized the court system and the justice system in this country against Donald Trump in an attempt to imprison him. He sat through a courthouse for seven weeks this past year, and the Democrats were hoping he would go to jail for it. That is real political violence that has led to two heinous assassination attempts on President Trump's life that by the grace of God, he was able to escape and he is here with us today. So yes, President Trump knows a little bit about political violence because he's experienced it himself. And talking about the the, the tragic realities of war that, that Liz Cheney and her father, Dick Cheney, have got this country into is not political violence. It's talking about the reality of the foreign conflicts that the Washington, D.C. is establishment have sold out young Americans to for decades. Yet, of course, after for those attempted assassination attempts on the former president's life, he, his opponents reached out to him and said they do not accept political violence. That has been a key difference. <laughs> I, I do want to play you. <laughs> no, no, please. His opponents are saying to this very day the same rhetoric that led to those two assassination attempts. The second attempted assassin on President Trump's life echoed the sentiment that President Trump is a threat to democracy. And if you're a deranged lunatic and you're mentally ill, you will believe that lie. And yes, you will take political violence like we have seen in two instances against President Trump last week week, Tim Walls and Kamala Harris said that everyone who showed up to President Trump's rally at Madison Square Garden was a Nazi. That's despicable, dangerous, divisive rhetoric that is spewed by the Democrat Party every single day. And I'm so sick and tired of the media pointing the finger at Donald Trump and saying that he is sowing division in this country. He is not. The media is for pushing hoaxes like the one that you all pushed today, and the Democrat Party is for pushing lies about him. But the good news is Americans don't buy it. And that's why today in 2024, President Trump is more popular than he has has been since 2016 because people don't trust the media and they're not buying the Harris campaign's closing argument that he's some great threat to our democracy because they lived under him for four years as president and our democracy and our country was stronger than it is. Today. Caroline makes some strong points and there's no doubt she's fired up about defending Trump. She touches on a big issue in politics right now, the way extreme language can have real consequences. She's right that words matter and the kind of rhetoric we hear can lead to serious problems. But here's the thing. It's not just one-sided. Trump and his supporters have also used divisive language, so putting all the blame on Democrats and the media doesn't really tell the whole story. Her claim that the justice system is being weaponized against Trump is something we've heard a lot from his side. But let's be real. Legal challenges aren't the same as political violence. 
Some people see these investigations as part of holding Trump accountable, while others see them as politically motivated. Honestly, how you view it probably depends on which side of the aisle you're on. Caroline's point about Trump's popularity taps into how a lot of his supporters feel. They believe he's been unfairly targeted and that his presidency was a time when things were better for the country. That resonates with his base, for sure, but the bigger question is whether that sentiment carries over to voters outside his core supporters, especially in such a divided country. In the end, Caroline's speech is great for rallying Trump's supporters and firing up his base. But for people who aren't already on his side, it might just come across as more finger-pointing and the same back and forth we've seen before. It's passionate, no doubt, but it doesn't do much to bring people together or address the bigger divide in politics today. I'd love to hear your thoughts on everything we covered today. Share your take in the comments. If you enjoy this type of content, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. See you in the next video.